We've got a great show for you today. We're going to look at those preseason games from last night, talk about Mac Jones and company. What did we see? What did we like? And then today's show is all about those top 10 quarterbacks. Which guys are going to end up on our teams? Which guys are a little too expensive for fantasy players? And who's going to bust? Enjoy the show. Hungering for something new this summer? HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepared in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Hey, this is Austin Eckler, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh, it's still football time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, take advantage, Mike. Friday, August 13th. Ooh. Spooky show today. <laughs> Probably the best Friday the 13th show we'll ever do. Had some preseason football. Excited to talk about that, actually. Yeah. Takeaways, like, I know that we try to be a filter of sorts. Of course. For the fantasy football player, not to get too high, too low, exaggerate what happens at training camp and preseason. But, um, look, that takes hard work not to do. So, I'm curious, your guys' takeaways. I had a few. Uh, you can watch the show. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. If you want to check that out, subscribe, click the bell. You'll know when we're going live. We're going to be doing a few live streams in the next few weeks. We'll be giving away some special things. So you'll want to be following us there or on Twitter at the FF Ballers for more information. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Every Friday during the season, we have a giveaway for a supporter of the show over at jointhefoot.com. Today's giveaway item from Pristine Auction is a Keenan Allen signed jersey. Oh, baby. Congratulations to Fat Tire Drinker. Mm, okay, that's a lot of you out there. That's okay. congratulations. But only one of you has named that on mm, Patreon. Okay, okay. Not, not a sponsor. Unless Mr. and Mrs. Fat Tire's out there listening to the show. I don't think that's their last name. And just a uh, guess. No, it's their first name. Oh, okay. Right. All right. Fat Tire Both of their Drinker. Uh, Pristine Auction uses code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. Congrats again to Fat Tire Drinker for your Keenan Allen signed jersey. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I mean, it's always headline news that you could head over to UltimateDraftKit.com and check out the UDK. Get ready for your draft. Now's the time. Uh, I made a number of uh, minor little tweaks. Tweaksies. I, not even tweaks, Mike. Just tweaksies. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to so my projections. Is a tweaksie like. It's a lower. Lower tier. than a tweak? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What he does is he changes stats on guys, but makes sure that nothing changes in the rankings. Where is a tinker? <laughs> right. right. Just, <laughs> just like three more targets to somebody. And where does a tinker fall in? Into the in the lineup of tweak and tweaksy. Oh, like a tinker or a tweak? Yeah, mm. or a tweaksy. Which one is which one? Tinkering is which? means there's a plurality that's included there. You to tinker with your rankings, you have to have changed three or more players. Mm -hmm. This piece is fitting together. And is absolutely, it, yeah. it is it like mindlessly because you're just tinkering. You don't actually um, realize what you're doing. <laughs> I think you can tinker with a little bit of your mind. Can you? Yeah. Okay. All right. Washington, New England last night. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. Got to see Jalen Hurts for a couple of drives. Got to see a lot of Mac Jones. Mm -hmm. Got to see uh, Ramondre go for 91 and oh, a 91-yard touchdown. So one of my observations, I guess I'm just worried about that offense in Philadelphia. Okay. Um, I think Jalen Hurts looked fine. I mean, he looked – Yeah. He, looked he got a couple drives, looked good, missed. Quez on a on a bomb down the sideline would have been a ninety eight yard touchdown. Just barely missed him. That's a really difficult throw for him. Yeah, 
Yeah, obviously. No, I'm just kidding. For, for any Yeah, it was no, it was close. They yeah. they almost connected on that. I wasn't saying that as a necessarily okay, negative, right. just like one foot away from mm-hmm. a ninety eight yard touchdown. But I'm worried about the Dallas Goddard ADP. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had so, a really he had a very nice reception in this game early on. And you watch him and you go, Man, that is a really talented tight end. And he can do a lot with it. And 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 I'm completely with you, Andy, that uh, there's the hype is because of his talent. Uh, but with Zach Ertz being as involved as he is, this is a split tight end situation that is not going to end well for fantasy. And Think- why invest that high of a draft pick on a split tight end situation? It was the Tyler Higby of last year for me where you will end up frustrated more. Like, Goddard's going to have some great games. He's a great player. But Ertz exists to make you feel pain unless they're just showcasing him to trade him. If they obviously like the whole situation's different without Zach Ertz, but Ertz represents a problem. To me. I think part of the hype is still the because I was over the offseason, man, I was very hyped for what Dallas Goddard could be. And no part question. of that is is the residual of the smoke of the offseason. I truly believe Philadelphia was trying to trade Zach Ertz. They were trying to get rid of him. Nobody wanted to take him, and now maybe that they he's disguised himself with the blonde hair, he can fool another team. Do they team. think he's gone? <laughs> they, Who's that guy? You can fool another team into trading for him. Maybe they are trying to showcase him to say, well, Zach Ertz still has something. Please trade for him. But if he is still there on the team, I'm unfortunately going to move. have to move Goddard down in the rankings. Will you also move Ertz up, or is that something that's contractually impossible for you? I hope that you two do the right thing and rank him accordingly because I will rank Zach Ertz strictly based on my Oh, heart. we have to counterbalance Mike. Yes. Okay, for our consensus. Yeah. Uh, there, There's also preseason hype around uh, Tyree Jackson, 6'8", tight end, got some playing time last night. You talk to people around Philly. They bring his name up too. Too many tight end cooks in that kitchen, and too many – just a lack of options on the outside right now. I, the, my takeaway for Philadelphia, I mean, among the, the tight end situation is, if Devontae Smith is that dude, <laughs> he is going to be flooded with targets. Yeah, you're going to have to. Over and over and over. So, yeah, when I watched, I, I, and I, I said this on our Slack channel, I thought Jalen Hurts played well, but it, it I'm really worried. Because it's very similar. Like, like Dallas got it looked good, but for fantasy – I don't think it's going to work out. And for Jalen Hurts, I believe he's a good quarterback. But right now, without Devontae Smith, it is it is a putrid receiving core. Because, look. We saw that movie with Carson Wentz. Yeah, I mean, right, we did. Uh, Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard are a, a, a very good one-two punch for your tight ends. One, one three. But they're still two still tight one, ends. Three punch. These are not like game-changing offensive weapons and the rest of the wide receiver core is yikes. Well, and, and where where's Dallas Goddard going to really help your fantasy team? Yeah. The red zone they can't reach is how it feels right now. The um you know, uh, no need to go Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins discussions here. I I I don't know if you guys had takeaways on the Pittsburgh side. I really didn't. Um, I believe the snap count for Najee was 30 of 33. With the first snaps team? Snaps with the first yeah, team. Yeah, I mean, he's he's established. He is. I'm, yeah, it, we, we knew it from the Hall of Fame game, but this is just, it's locked in. Najee Harris is going to be on the field for the vast majority of snaps. I want to talk about New England. Okay. Me too. Why don't I give you the floor, Jason? What were your takeaways from watching the start with Cam, watching – prolonged opportunities for Mac Jones. My, I'm really curious. My biggest takeaway and the one that I wanted to talk about because it was literally the number one thing I went into yesterday looking for from both of these games is I wanted to see how does Cam Newton look? Does Cam Newton look because there's been a lot of hype and a lot of him talking about how he finally feels better than mm-hmm. he has and you know he's been injured and now he doesn't feel that way. He's back to his old self and I watched and it was identical to what I saw last year from Cam like mm. He didn't, you know, he'd roll out of the pocket and throw on the move and be not the old Cam doing that. And so to me, I just, there was a piece of me, a hope, a glimmer that was like, Cam's going to play this whole season. He's going to be back to kind of his old form and they're going to win games with Cam because I think this defense is great. 
and Cam's going to do enough to let Max sit for the season. And and I I don't I don't believe that. Watching him play, I was like, this is the Cam we've seen the last couple of years, which is he's a weapon in his own right, but he's just not a great quarterback. I'll be shocked if Mac isn't the quarterback early. I don't understand why this team wouldn't do that. Uh, I thought he looked good. Defense, special teams, that's what this team's going to win with. I think you lose something with Mac on the field around the goal line, obviously, Cam Newton. But Mac Jones, I think, should be the quarterback of this team. Just and bring Cam in on the goal line. Man. Well, like, well, that, why not? That goes to my takeaway is I know people are – Stevenson is the the talk of, of that game because of the dude busted off a highlight run. And he's, a, he's an interesting running back because you weren't really sure – what player was going to show up of the out of shape guy who were and you had the, the quote from the new England staff of what is, what is Ramondre need to improve everything. And it was like, Oh, that's, that's not high praise. Uh, but to the other side of that, Damien Harris, I think is he's locking himself in as one of my favorite value running wow, back. Picks. I had a totally different uh, takeaway from the running back room. I'm excited for him because especially if it's Mac Jones. Oh, okay. I'm curious, Jay. I my takeaway was like, oh, that's why I was weak need about Damian Harris early in the year because Sony got snaps. White's going to be third. Sony got snaps once the first team was gone. Right, uh, but but you had him. I mean, he's still there. That was something we thought might not be the case. And then Ramondre looks good. And then you have third down James White. And then all of a sudden, I'm reminded about a f four headed running back room on a team I don't like. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, I I don't know if it was complete confirmation bias. I haven't been very high on Damian Harris. When I watched, I thought, he looks good. Yes. And this is not going to be good for fantasy. Once again, like, this offense is not going to be great. I don't think either quarterback's going to be running a prolific offense here. It's, it looks like it's going to be a slow, meandering offense, and he's either, he's not going to be involved in the passing game. Uh, the, the way they utilize him just looked like how they have always. And uh, that's not involved in the passing game. And then you have the goal line problems. So um, even even when he got close to the goal line, you know, it was on that that penalty. And it was like, oh, you, you come back. And um, so, yeah, I'm I'm meh on. I love the talent. I just think that plugging into this offense with the other running backs there and the quarterback situation is um, I'm bypassing Harris. A running back that can see 15 opportunities that you're drafting in the seventh or eighth round. That's that's fabulous to me. All right. Well, we'll see how that plays out. I did. I tweaked him a little bit, tinkered a okay. little bit. Okay. Um, and then the thing that, the thing that I was watching for, and again, this is you. You're trying not to overreact. It's very, very small sample. It's the first preseason game for this team. Antonio Gibson, no third down snaps. It was it was a combination of J.D. McKissick and Peyton Barber. And McKissick left the field with the first team. Just like Gibson did, in terms of like snaps. No, no, he came no, back. He out. was, he was. Uh, I noticed McKissick playing. Uh, yeah, playing later. M McKissick played a little bit later. Having said that, eleven of Antonio Gibson snaps, or eleven Antonio Gibson snaps, eight opportunities. So he he, he was the. You said no third down snaps. Right, he was, but he was the focal point of the offense when he was out there. I mean, that's that's very high volume, and that included. Uh, Two targets as well. And Washington's defense is pretty good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that, that defensive dude. line is one I Young? would not want to play Holy on the other crap. side against. That guy is a monster. Logan Thomas? Yeah, he had a nice reception. Obviously, Curtis Samuel not out there. Terry right. McLaurin was out there. Uh, let's move on. Okay. Jeremy Fowler from ESPN reporting Darren Waller's ankle injury is, quote, not concerning, which is what we've heard. Um, are you not concerned anymore? Uh, the, uh, you know, <laughs> it's nice to hear this because we had a we had kind of a different source saying that they thought it was just an ankle injury that they're being cautious with, and then it comes out afterwards that that's exactly what is going on. So I am less concerned now. It's it's not not going to be a, a long term injury. It's not something that's uh, you know I I'm I'm fine taking Darren Waller in the third. Mike Williams. <sighs> Hip flexor. Uh, here we go. Not going to play in the preseason. So Mike Williams is very, very proficient and efficient in terms of getting injured. Yeah, unfortunately. I'll still take him with like my last. Now that he'll sure. drop yeah, with yeah. this, my last pick, he's 
the potential wide receiver two for Justin Herbert, and he's going to be probably available on your waivers after draft. Traquan Smith misses eighth, eighth straight practice on Thursday. Michael Thomas had a productive meeting with Sean Payton to move past their frustration. That's good. I mean, there was, of course, trade rumors. It helps. It helps you know where to appropriately put the returning from injury, Michael Thomas. Mm Mm-hmm. Um. All right, I think that's it. Brooks, yep. you got anything else for us? Nothing else. All right, that was today's news and notes brought to you by Sleeper, the largest dynasty platform on the planet. And, uh, you know, you can tweak. You can do some tweaks. You can. You can do some tinkering with those very dynasty cu- settings. Very customizable. So uh, check that out. Let's get into the quarterback rankings. Quarterbacks. I'm excited to talk about the quarterback position in general. I mean, every year we have similar discussions with regards to how do you value them? Where do you take them in fantasy drafts? Everybody out there, if you're a brand new player, default mindsets in fantasy football, they revolve around who's the MVP of the National Football League, who are the players that you know take the get the most media coverage, and that's always the quarterback position. But in fantasy, you have to evaluate your roster by – a lot of other factors and in truth quarterbacks you start one of them unless you're in a super flex league or a two quarterback league and so there are a lot of pretty good quarterbacks in football yeah so you have to pick your spot when it comes to grabbing one of these guys and now we're going to talk through the top 10 and maybe one of those questions i'll have for you guys is which of the top 10 represents the very best value if you're going to go in on one of them Last year, scoring was way, way up. There were 74 more passing touchdowns last year despite only 154 more attempts. It was a weird year. The touchdown rate skyrocketed to 4.8%. You can attribute, I mean, I believe there were 38 quarterbacks with a top 12 week. So, Mike, you've talked about it. Defenses didn't get a big opportunity to prepare last year. We might have felt that on the field. I'm curious, do you guys think that those numbers change this year or is this just more indicative of the future and what they do for offenses? Oh, it definitely is going to change. I mean, the, the the offense is becoming more and more prolific and the rules are favoring the offense. And over time, the, the needle is pointing up for sure. However, the outlandish amount of offensive production last year is just a clear outlier. But it, that's really... You know, it's it's for the most part irrelevant when you're talking about a ranking of the quarterbacks because I think it'll be a kind of a universal thing. Yes. It's not like it was all because of Josh Allen and Josh Allen alone and he's coming back. So really when we're when we're cycling through these quarterbacks looking at, you know, why we like one versus another and where they are slotting in in drafts, whether or not even if they're our favorite quarterback or our second favorite quarterback, maybe there's someone that we just flat wouldn't draft because of the value. That's the interesting conversation as we dive in. And remember, you know, for the vast majority of the season, there was nobody in the stadium. There were no fans. So I think the experiment of does home field advantage actually matter? I think we have a resounding answer here that when the when the road team – Is on the field and can call plays and talk to each other without fan noise. It's a lot easier to score. That's a good point. I mean, that was a huge kind of intangible that was removed. Kyler Murray is number one on our rankings. He's two. What? Yes. But but Pat Mahomes. (laughs) That's your whole argument. Yeah. Well, his name. Yeah. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the league. Would you agree? I mean, I have him ranked one. So yeah. It's yeah. a pretty well, good argument. I'm saying, yeah, thank you, Brooks. <laughs> well, sure. I have I have Kyler at two. You guys have Kyler at one. Um, he's being drafted as the QB three, so I think the Vopo that you should have said was something to do with, like, he's just there because you're a Cardinal fan. That That's fair. We are Cardinals fans, and so this might be viewed as a homer pick. Um, you know, out of 100... So uh, more of a, like a Marge pick. You know, expert consensus rankers... Um, I, I think there's only three people with Kyler as the number one, but it is really, uh, that's, that's really surprising to me. This is not a Homer pick. I'm not a, uh, I'm not a, someone that loves every Arizona Cardinal by any means. Um, but my case for Kyler Murray is we've already seen him really be like a, the quarterback one last year as a reminder, 
through the first 11 weeks, he was far and away the quarterback one. Like, like Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson were fantastic. They had 260 fantasy points, and Kyler was up at 291 fantasy points. Then he got injured, injured his shoulder, and from weeks uh, 12 through 17, he was the quarterback 17 struggling through that injury. Didn't run as much, didn't throw as well. It was, it was really a problem. You saw it on the field. He was so good in those first 11 weeks that – Week 16, like your, you know, everybody's fantasy championships, Kyler actually was the quarterback one. He finished, if you take out week 17 that nobody plays, as the quarterback one. That's how good he was before the injury because he has the seven, 800 rushing yards, the potential for double digit rushing touchdowns. And then he can also throw for 4,500 yards and. Uh, 30 plus touchdowns and so that's why I think the the potential for him to take that leap forward in the passing touchdown category in his year three adding AJ Green adding uh, Rondale Moore with the legs I, I think he is the most valuable asset for the quarterback position in fantasy this year if you look on the other side of the coin though and I would, for the record, I'd rather take Kyler Murray in the fourth round than, than Patrick Mahomes at the end of the second. So I'll do that every single time. Like, I don't look at the gap between them, you know, as insurmountable by ADP standards. But it's very difficult to have consistency at the position. We saw Lamar Jackson go from all of your arguments, all of the arguments last year would have been, okay, Hollywood's going to have... You know, he's got every reason to have a better year and and Lamar is going to, um, you know, he's always going to give you this rushing baseline and it was a rougher ride. Does that exist for Kyler in your mind where I think the reason Mahomes is there is because you have a longer sample of elite quarterback consistency. That's it. And a little bit more of a guarantee at the at the touchdown in terms of not rushing, but passing like I would bet my house on Patrick Mahomes touchdown totals being above a certain level before any other quarterback in football. Yes, completely agree with you. The The difference, though, between Lamar Jackson and Kyler is the passing work, right? Mm -hmm. Lamar Jackson was uh, he, he was inconsistent, even though he has that rushing baseline. His breakout year was 3,100 passing yards. Right. Last year, he had 2,700 passing yards. That is not like with the Arizona Cardinal Cliff Kingsbury offense and Kyler's passing ability, he's, he's going to – I mean, 4,000 yards is pretty much – guaranteed for Kyler 11 rushing touchdowns is probably not guaranteed for Kyler not guaranteed but obviously indicative of what he can do around the goal line yeah and the, the floor is safe you saw very safe I mean like he he takes care of it inside of the uh as far as like running the ball inside the five he had eight carries like he he frequently calls his own number and so I have I have Kyler as my number one guy as well and and his I don't like the early quarterback in in terms of spending a high pick on them, but Kyler, who drops into the fifth round sometimes, is he's at least interesting yeah, when we're, we're talking about these top guys. Right now, he's four oh six, and there are just there's there's wide receivers in the fourth round that I would a hundred percent of the time take over Kyler. Uh, he can get I've seen him get into the fifth round where I will draft him in the fifth round. Um, uh, there's kind of a break in wide receivers there. Uh, so if he drops, I'm willing to draft him. But even though he's my number one, I probably am not ending up with him in the fourth round. I'm and not... it, uh, the improved offensive line, like they've uh, the the acquisition of Rodney Hudson, uh, superstar center that they took or that they traded for from the from the Raiders, that is a huge deal when you have someone with that experience and that it can can give you give you that level of protection. Massive upgrade. Yeah, all right, before we get all the way down to Patrick Mahomes, uh, I want to thank today's sponsors, Helix Sleep. Uh, look, I know some of you are sleeping on old, saggy, nasty mattresses at night, and you deserve better. You deserve to give yourself an upgrade. Uh, I, I sleep on a Helix mattress. We've replaced our guest room mattress with a Helix mattress because we loved it so much. I need to replace the kids' mattresses because they love sleeping in our bed. It's like... <laughs> Your bed's so comfortable, and you know I gotta, I could just need to value them. Get more. out! Uh, but listen, everybody likes a different type of mattress, and Helix Sleep 
matches it to your custom desires. There's a quiz. It's two minutes. They match it to your body type. Look, I'm Team Hefty Boys. They have a Hefty Boy mattress, a plus size just for us heavier guys, and it makes a difference. Just go to helixsleep.com slash footballers. You take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. And right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for the Foot Clan at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. We also want to thank Upstart for supporting the show today. Um Really believe in this product. If you're carrying a credit card balance month after month, trying you know on a number of cards, it can feel like a never-ending cycle of debt based on the interest rates you're paying. And so what Upstart does is they try to help you make that final payment so that you can get ahead. They are the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. So you can pay off all the cards with a personal debt. You can consolidate high-interest debt you can get strategic and smart about getting your debt paid off, which gives you more flexibility for life. Uh, they know that you are more than just your credit score, so they are expanding access to affordable credit. And you can find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash footballers. That's upstart.com slash footballers. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you Loan amounts will be determined based on credit, but also income and other information provided in the loan application. You can go and learn more at upstart.com slash footballers. Well, we have plummeted way down the rankings to number two. Oh, Patrick Mahomes is here. By the way, like Mahomes, Allen, and they're both going ahead of Kyler. Our consensus number one. And then Lamar is basically going at the same spot. Like it's either, it's like depending on the draft you're in, somebody's taking Lamar there. Somebody's taking Kyler there. On average. So Patrick Mahomes, he's been a quarterback one in 75% of his starts going back to 2018. You want a reason to take Patrick Mahomes, or if in a vacuum, no draft consideration, you want a reason to start Patrick Mahomes over Kyler. Three years, 75% of his starts, he finishes as a quarterback one. Yeah, he's the safer option. I mean, he, he just is. He's got a better coordinator, better weapons uh, fewer mistakes less interceptions yeah i mean uh, there's very little to say poorly about patrick mahomes we all know he's unfathomably great at football andy reed greater sign cliff kingsbury ah, oh man that's not even a fair fight <laughs> at all um yeah i mean andy reed is a offensive mastermind and uh cliff kingsbury pretends to be one. um but the issue with, with Patrick Mahomes is when you are giving up a second-round pick to draft him, basically he has to have the, that 50-touchdown season to really pay off in what you are losing um, at, at, that, at that place with a really high-end running back or wide receiver. Just too expensive when you have other great options, I think. Um, I Nothing more to say. <laughs> yeah, I said the – the last thing I would say about Mahomes is what's nice is, you know, it, in fantasy football, the the trend, if you go back 10 years, the number one QB in ADP was always last year's number one quarterback. That's just how it worked. Someone someone hit, someone flashed, and then they're, auto, they're automatically the number one guy. Yeah, that's ADP. happened a lot, Lamar. And, uh, and the Michael Vick here. And, like, that, that just – that is happening – but those quarterbacks were not actually safe to be the you know, a top three guy. Patrick Mahomes is very safe to be a top three quarterback. Number three on our list is Josh Allen. Oh, excellent. Buffalo Bills quarterback. Jason and myself have met three. Mike at four. Yeah, take that. His average his draft <laughs> position is the end of the third round as the quarterback two. So when you talk about that trend, Mike, he didn't slide all the way up to the number one position. Uh, despite finishing at number one overall, he slid up to the number two by ADP behind Mahomes. Um, ended up with 4,500 yards, 37 touchdowns, just 10 interceptions, right? Like it's one thing to put up 37 touchdowns, outlier type of season. It's mm -hmm. another to just reduce that interception total to an elite level. That's what was most impressive. That's the biggest sign to me that there was a true level up and not an outlier. But another eight rushing touchdowns. Like he doesn't do it like Lamar and Kyler 
but he still ends up in the end zone and is valuable with that Cam Newton-esque type of prowess. Yeah, you're not getting 800 to 1,000 rushing yards, but the touchdowns on the ground will come because he is unbelievably – uh, valuable there. You you get an extra blocker at the goal line when you're when it's your quarterback running the ball, and because of his size and strength, they're like they're not they're never going to go away from that. Maybe when he's like 36, they'll stop. But uh, Cam's still doing it, so his rushing touchdowns will be there. His passing yardage will be there. His connection with Stephon Diggs is great. The offense is you know they didn't they didn't have a change. There was a lot of fear that maybe their offensive coordinator would be promoted and out of there. But this is just a great offense, and it's an offense that doesn't need to run the ball. Probably won't run the ball that well. And I expect great things again. The one place that I don't expect to be as good is the touchdown passing rate. Six and a half percent of Josh Allen's throws it's were touchdowns. High. That's that's pretty darn high. Um, you know, NFL average is more around four and a half. So if he has a good season and he's at five, but takes a slight regression from, you know, his MVP efficiency of this last year and just comes back towards a good quarterback, then I think you I would be surprised to have him. Uh, stay put at that touchdown rate personally which means he's probably not worth the investment that high in your in your draft and that's really the headline for fantasy players he did have seven top three finishes over the course of the year so he had monster games that won you weeks if you listen to the show last year I infamously made a championship week decision to start Tom Brady against Detroit <laughs> instead of Josh yes. Allen against New England in New England yeah and Tom Brady went out and scored 40 fantasy points in the, oh, first, you were right. in the first half and didn't play in the second half. And then Josh Allen went out and put up 45 oh, against the Patriots a, in New England. What a big dummy oh, you, you are. are wrong. So I think part of that was that's impressive, right, to go on the road against a team that has historically kept your fantasy numbers extremely uh, suppressed and then go out and just light them up through and through. Yeah, and I've I've seen a bunch of uh, like I'm not drafting Josh Allen in the third round. It's it's simply not happening. I think we've laid out a, a good pro and and the pros and the cons for Josh Allen. I have seen a, a lot of people saying I can keep Josh Allen in the seventh or the eighth round because that's that's what his ADP was last year, and he was one of our top targets. And so just to answer to those people, if you can keep Josh Allen in the seventh or the eighth round. Yes. Congrats. Yeah, I would 100% do that. Absolutely. And and it, it's a good point not to toot our own hon horns, but <laughs> horns? Um, <laughs> what does that sound like? But the, the, the point that you just <laughs> glossed over. You don't tote your own horns. <laughs> we, we, were, we were high on Josh Allen last year as a breakout potential. He's in the ultimate draft kit as one of our breakouts. And we always want to try to find that break. Like when, when Lamar Jackson – won everybody his league he was a late round pick that year when mm -hmm. Mahomes broke out and won everybody their league he was a late round pick Josh Allen last year was a late round pick so Kyler's gonna be great Josh Allen's gonna be great but we want to find the guy going in round eight plus that has the potential to really break out yeah and quarterback one hasn't repeated since 2012 that's a long time Lamar comes in at four on our consensus rankings Jason has him at four Mike at three I'm at six with Lamar uh, last year, he had 26 passing touchdowns, 2,700 yards passing, seven rushing touchdowns, 1,000 yards on the ground. He already owns two of the top three quarterback rushing yards seasons of all time. That's only because he hasn't played another season. Correct. <laughs> um, but it was, a, it was a year in which the first, what, 10 weeks, you, if you had made the pl taken the plunge, right? Like, people did it. They did it with Michael Vick. Mm -hmm. They took the plunge. Oh, boy. He's just too valuable if he gives you those special weeks. And it wasn't – it was a bumpy ride. It was a, it was a ride that didn't help your team for at least the first half of the year. In the second half, okay, he got it going. Quarterback two in fantasy points per game behind Josh Allen. Fourth round, round where Kyler's going. What is the – I mean, and now you got injuries. Rashad Bateman's not coming back for a while. Most people are saying that's going to be October. Um. Do you have worries? I don't. Uh, like Rashad Bateman is an addition to this. He is not. He at this point he is not a subtraction to what. So is he fairly priced? Is Lamar fairly priced at, I, at the four hundred eight right now? I think so. I I would prefer to. I would play the ADP 
gamble game and go into the fifth and see if Kyler or Lamar can drop to the fifth. And then and if they don't, that's all right. I'll 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 just take a quarterback a little bit later. Uh, so, but, but Bateman will – I think he's an upgrade to this team for sure. He's an incredible rookie prospect for the Ravens. But he wasn't there last year. He wasn't there two years ago when Lamar Jackson was great. And Sammy Watkins, for all the jokes and everything that – of Sammy Watkins never fully living up to his potential, he's still a good wide receiver. Like he can still help an NFL Blood. team. He's cold blooded, baby. Bloody. Yeah, I mean he's he's far better than a Willie Sneed yes. type of uh, ancillary player. I I do think Lamar Jackson is uh, properly priced, but again, I won't draft him in the fourth. And and what if he slips to the fifth and you didn't get Kyler? Are you is he off your board? Because I was going to ask you that if both of those guys. That's a great question. Yeah, I probably, to be honest, I probably would not take Lamar Jackson in the fifth round. Let me um, let me read you his passing yard totals in the five weeks that he set the league on fire last year. <laughs> 107, 163, 243, 183, 113. That's hysterical. So I, I think that that is a little bit scary, right? Like there were a lot of rushing touchdowns, four in that five-game span. A lot of passing touchdowns. And a lot of passing touchdowns on low yardage, but I don't know if that's—I don't well, know. I don't know if that was like a return to form as much as a nice five-game run. That efficiency-wise, that's clearly an outlier. That's even an outlier per passing yard for his outlier season the year prior. So you know, through the first twelve weeks, there were only four games where Lamar Jackson was a top 15 quarterback. So we know that it because of the small passing pie, there is disappointment uh, when he doesn't get all the touchdowns. All right, let's move on he, to – And, look, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm just saying he was on the Madden cover last year. Mm. Not saying. So he's not this year. See, I thought no. you were going to go with he won you a title, and so you're oh, undyingly I, I, loyal Because to him. you didn't draft him. You yeah. traded it for him <laughs> after he was, right. bad. It was Which great. is a strategy you can take with these players. Yes. If somebody overinvests on a Josh Allen and then you get a couple rough weeks, that's when you pounce. Well, here's our first kind of surprise, bigger surprise, uh, compared to consensus. Number five on our consensus quarterback rankings, number nine in the community. It's Tom Brady. Plant man no. Oh. The plant man himself. I have him at four, guys. Yeah, this is you guys. Jason has him at five. We've One of us has ended up with him in every mock draft this offseason because he's an eighth-round pick. And, Mike, you've got him at eight, which is still... I have no problem with Tom Brady. I'm just saying I don't have him. Yeah, you have him a spot ahead I of ADP, too. pushing him up to five. Last year, 4,600 yards, 40 touchdowns through the air. Um... Is that six rushing yards? Is that what he had last year? <laughs> mm. Three well, ru three rushing touchdowns on six rushing yards. Imagine if he had a thousand <laughs> rushing yards. Yeah, that's what Tom. That Tom Brady sneak. Uh, they it's, can't be stopped. That is, I, that is accurate. Six that is. Yards. So he he's he, <laughs> okay. That's great. I mean, it's unstoppable. It really is an unfathomable weapon. I don't understand it, and I I I would not have believed that it was just a Tom Brady thing if he didn't change teams. Because you think it's like, oh, he's working with his offensive line and Bill Belichick. They see something, they've game planned something, but he changes teams. It's like you can't stop him from getting a couple yards on that on that quarterback sneak. I think the headline here for us, and we've talked about it this off season, but if you're just coming to the show for the first time, we need to make the case for Tom Brady because this is the first quarterback that we're all willing to draft in fantasy leagues because of the draft cost. He was acclimating to the Bruce Arian system last year. He is the GOAT, so it happened quicker than it did for Carson Palmer or Jameis Winston or any of the other uh, Andrew Luck. He only had 12 interceptions in the system, and from week seven on, he was the quarterback six. So if you think it's silly to have him up here, this is what he was from week seven on. That's a pretty large sample size, won the Super Bowl, and I don't care how old he is anymore. No. I'm you, just going to live there in the Tom Brady experience until he tells me I, I'm not allowed to. Yeah, when someone makes a deal with the devil, you don't worry about their age any longer. <laughs> okay, so, it's not my deal. It, it, right. I mean, <laughs> I my soul's intact. I don't know about <laughs> Brady, but at 44, he's 
something's going on. There's a bunch so, of Horcruxes all over the place. For sure. we got to find them and destroy them. But in the meantime, <laughs> draft them. Because, look, when I when I look at the splits last year, oh, you're Tom you're, Riddle. You're, oh, Tom Riddle, indeed. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, so here's the thing. Um, when I look you at the splits of last nerds. year. You're darn right. Harry Potter nerd for life. Um, How was your Dungeons & Dragons session this week? Oh, it was fantastic. Okay. We, didn't, we didn't talk about Harry Potter at all. <laughs> so, so the thing is, is obviously getting adjusted to a new system, a new, new receiving core, new coach uh, in a COVID year. So you, you think the back half of the year is probably a little bit more indicative, but also had injuries in the front of the year and then got Antonio Brown added to the team in week nine. But when you look at the splits of the first half or the, the second half, the last eight games, it is the perfect split because that is when Godwin was healthy the whole time. Antonio Brown was on the team the whole time. Mike Evans was out there the whole time. It was basically... If these pieces are on the field, what is it like? And he had the whole stretch and obviously went to a Super Bowl. During that stretch, he was on pace for 5,193 yards and 42 and a half touchdowns. He was outstanding. And when you have Chris Godwin, when you have Mike Evans, when you have Antonio Brown, when you have Gronk as your fourth weapon, and when you're getting even an, an O.J. Howard back, um, that uh, granted it's Achilles, maybe that won't do anything, but it's more about the receiving core here. This is an offense that we know is going to move, that is going to score a ton of touchdowns with the greatest quarterback of all time. He's going late in the draft. And it's I, just easy. I'm just going to throw another wrinkle into the equation that he did not have last year on this offense that he will this year. I never imagined he could possibly help another franchise. Oh, no, you are not. Don't do it. You are not doing it. He's not going to help your fantasy team, but he's going to help Tom Brady get oh. a lot of free. You know he doesn't have a mustache anymore, right? Free yards, and it's Gio Bernard. <sighs> he got his James White and Gio Bernard a perfect fit for Brady. He came out and said how excited he is to work with Gio this year. He is going to open their playbook up to the James White experience as well and give the immobile Tom Brady – an escape hatch that isn't the bumbling stone hands say anyone, of either Fournette or Ronald Jones. Come on, Keisha Vaughn, get anyone your act together. throwing the ball to, to Ronald Jones, when Giovanni Bernard shows up, you're like, what? This is an angel <laughs> descended on the, from heaven for me. Uh, so it, it, I think we all just – look, there, there's a non-rosy picture for Brady. Yeah, it, I, injuries to some of those players, his decline – you know, there there could be the defense is a, pr a pretty good defense, and and it could it's, limit how much he has to do. I mean, right? He's forty four years old. If he comes down with any kind of injury, I mean, we look. Peyton Manning was absolutely awesome late in his career, unbelievably good until one injury couldn't be recovered from, and it was poof, it was done. Right now, he's healthy, and so I will say this: if 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 he's, he's more healthy, if he sprain right because he, he had played a torn on the MC MCL last year. Yeah, if if he sprains his foot or his shoulder or some in week three, uh, you know I I'd be fine to. You know he's move just gonna he, if that happened, he'll eat a lot more plants. He'll eat a he? bunch of grass and he'll be fine. Yeah, and I'm again I'm not as bullish on Tom Brady as you guys. I'm fine with him in you know in the eighth round. I've seen him go later sometimes. Yeah. as well. But if we're talking just at ADP. You got Tom Brady in the eighth, or you got this next guy in the seventh. Aaron Rodgers. And that's where I would go. Aaron Rodgers. So you'd go around earlier with Aaron Rodgers, seventh round. It depreciated ADP due to why? I mean, MVP because, last year. Because uh, we thought he was going to retire. I think, yeah, I don't think this is – like what you're saying right now is accurate where if it's one round difference, why not go with Rodgers? Yeah. But I don't think come August 27th, It'll be a round. It'll be two rounds at that point. Probably when, once the casual players show up, Rodgers will likely skyrocket. Yeah, I mean, forty-eight touchdowns kind of skyrocket. And was the quarterback three last year? Incredible season. Uh, you know, highest percentage of his touchdowns in the red zone. You know, just dominant. I think it's a pretty good value if you can get him here. It's just you can't count on thirty-eight touchdowns or forty-eight touchdowns again. Yeah, I agree. Forty-eight they, to five touchdown to interception ratio. So that feels like a cheat. And to highlight those the the red zone numbers and how insane it was, it last. Or let's go 2019. He throws the ball 17 times inside the five for seven touchdowns, which that is actually a that's very really good. That's a high number. Uh, last year, 30 attempts inside the five. For twenty touchdowns, um, 
I think that number's going to come down. Well, he has uh, his good friend, personal request. He did some fantasy trading this offseason. He did. And he acquired his good buddy, Randall Cobb, to return to the offense, which does help. I mean, reliability is what Cobb brings you. It's not explosiveness. It's, it's okay, when Devontae Adams isn't the option on this play, which is a rarity, I have somebody else I can throw to. So Cobb is there. Aaron Jones, you know, he loses Jamal Williams. Aaron Jones is there. He's got Tunyon as a great uh, red zone and, you know, a touchdown option, especially as, as teams start, you know, getting more and more worried about Devontae Adams and shifting coverage. They're, they're very good at sneaking Tunyon out for uh, large gains to a wide open side of the field. I, I, I have no problem with Aaron Rodgers. You just look back at his career and obviously uh, first belt Hall of Famer, but fantasy career. He has finished high so many times. He used to be the consensus number one pick year after year after year. And there is something to the fact, uh, you know, like the touchdown regression is probable here. Yes. But I do actually believe there is something tangible to the fact that he has zero farts to give about yeah. what the Packers think, what the Packers call. He is going to do what he wants to do. So when he's on the goal line, and he wants to throw a touchdown, and they call a run play, I'm, he's going to be like, I'll just throw it to Devontae Adams because I know I could do it. I, like, he's going to have a great season. And to your point earlier when we brought up the touchdown percentage, the numbers with Josh Allen, you know, the fact that the league average is, what did you say, 4.5%? Mm -hmm. Rodgers has been below that number one time in his entire career. Yeah, his career average is 6.1. Yeah, and he's been yeah he's been up above 6.5% like six, seven times. He followed up a outlier 45 touchdown season where he was 9% with him just a disastrous 39 touchdown 7% season so 48 touchdowns probably not going to happen but 39 explosive weeks week winning weeks you'll be happy we'll just see where that draft price creeps up yep seven is Russell Wilson eight is Dak Prescott oh boy oh boy Dak but uh, let's start with Russ he was the Quarterback six fantasy finish last year, but it was a bumpy road over the back half. 4,200 yards, 40 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. You're going to be living in the efficient wonderland of Russell Wilson. But that is a, I mean, that's a, it's a scarier place as a fantasy player to be waiting for efficient touchdown totals compared to, you know, pure volume or something of that nature. Russ has been over efficient his, his entire career. So it's not an outlier to, to project him above the the NFL average, and he does, he's still mobile. He still runs around over 500 rushing yards. You're not getting a high output of rushing touchdowns, but it's nice to to pad those numbers a little bit of safety with with over 500 rushing yards last year and still over 4,000 passing yards. For me, the question for Russell Wilson is: Imagine, because you we know what. The, the top is. You know what Russell Wilson could do. You saw it for the first half of last year. If that could, gets put together into a full season, that's the quarterback one. And But you know that Russell Wilson, at the very least, is still going to be uh, – he'll be a top 10 guy by the end of the year. It's just what is that road – is is that a paved road or is that a, a cobblestone? Cobblestone, and you're by the end of it, you're got You got to repair your shocks. My you wagon wheels are shattered. I mean, what do you do with that, Jason? 18th in consistency over the back half, first in the first half, and you don't just average those things. You have to think about it as your experience as a fantasy player. You spend an early sixth round pick, aren't you locking them in? Uh, yeah, you you would be locking them in if you draft someone in the in the first six rounds. That's that's the tough thing to do. And as far as well, which one are we going to get? It really is all entirely to me about the system. Like Russ is good. Russ can get it done. It's what system are we going to see? Because there were really two systems last year. It was the first half of the year let Russ cook, and then he started you know having turnovers and losing games, and then they're like, no, oh, we gotta we gotta change that. We gotta throw less, and so they really swung the pendulum too far the other way, and then they replaced the coordinator in the offseason with a lot of offseason hype about wanting to run more, pass less. However, Shane Waldron, the new offensive coordinator, everything he's talking about, everything you're hearing from the players, uh, I've heard Russell Wilson, uh, Tyler Lockett, and DK Metcalf all mentioned this independently. 
and you know uh, Shane Waldron saying it over and over is tempo 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 they want to be a faster paced offense they want to keep the defense on their heels and I do believe that if you just get more offensive snaps in for Russell Wilson he's going to be more consistent and a great fantasy option so if you want to take the shot of the talent and the weapons that they're going to be a faster pace of play I'm fine with that with Russell Wilson but you are going to lock him in and he has over the last several years just had like it's always every single year it's like well one half's good one half's bad I don't know what it is but those things scare me away and I will probably not take Russell Wilson in a in a redraft league in a best ball league I I'm in love I'm hopeful for the offense for what you're talking about with, with Waldron because the volume went when Russ was destroying in that first half through uh, through week nine he was averaging 37 passing attempts per game. That and then after that, the second half it was thirty-two. So it wasn't like his attempts got cut in half or anything. I mean, yes, on average five attempts per game. That's a, a substantial number, but it wasn't just the volume. He just completely was worse. Went away. He he was worse. The offense was worse. More turnovers. Defenses knew how to stop what they were doing. Uh, Dak is at eight right now. Here's a a quick question on Dak. We know the potential, right? We know how good he is when he's on the field. Is he is he off your board if you're drafting in the next week? This sucks. How far does he fall this week? <laughs> yeah, I mean he's a, he was a fifth round a fifth round quarterback, the QB five. If he falls to the seventh, I would scoop him up still. Okay, you take the chance. How about you, Mike? Dude, I I, I was dreading talking about Dak Prescott because he before the before the injury to what it was officially a lat injury. Is that where we are? I mean, the injury to his – so he can't throw. Dak Prescott was very exciting for fantasy football. He's always been a fantastic guy for that. He was off to a, an insanely hot start before the broken ankle, and now it's Do – I don't – when is Dak going to play? I have no idea. Am I wrong? You guys saw Hard Knocks this week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. McCarthy was reacting to the amount of involvement that Dak had in the first practice. You realize that? Mm -hmm. It wasn't like they went into the first practice and said, let's make sure we keep him under this. It was he had the first practice, and then they go, oh, my gosh, he had this much work. Now let's limit him. Yeah, by whatever their like statistic a, was. Yeah, it seemed like they – Whoops. It was a reaction, and he was so upset that he wasn't getting more playing time, and here you are with clearly an injury that's probably the result of like a long hiatus and being out there on the field. It's disappointing. There's too many question marks for me right now. Um, I guess Jason's right. I mean, yeah, there's always a point in which you maybe make the investment, but because let's if I see you, Andy, you have Dak down at ten. Was that a result of the? No, he was. He's been there that whole time for yeah, you. Yeah, I just like oh, other okay. quarterbacks better. Okay, I have not adjusted him since the injury. Interesting. Wow. So you guys have him at six and eight. All of us behind ADP because you do have to spend a fifth round pick on him right now, and um. Whether or not this injury to his shoulder existed, there was still coming back from a severe ankle injury. How mobile will he be? How much of the rushing – like he's always been good for a handful of rushing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. There were some question marks there, and there were other players that I just liked more. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for the shoulder injury for me, I, it, this is the quarterback two two years ago, and he was all, he was basically the quarterback one last year before the injury. You know how much was different two years ago, Jason? Sure, we he didn't were have on CD, tour. He didn't have CD Lamb yeah. <laughs> two years ago. Um, the the wide receiver core, the offense, the defense, uh, and the, the ability is a good point. I mean, I I really really like Dak. My big worry is just the shoulder. If he drops to where I think it's a good enough value, I'll take the shot that he's healthy. Is it and, even fair to call them a defense? Like, is that like the Cowboys? Right. Like, yeah. I think by rule they have to. Okay. Let me. Okay, Jason. Let's ask. Sorry, this. Cowboys fans. Uh, Dak drops to the eighth round, and you're. But the news is coming out. Well, we don't think Dak is going to play Week One. Yeah, I mean, we're not he, sure if he's going to play week two. Is Dak the, that level of quarterback no. where you're willing to take him and then just stream for those first couple of weeks? No, because there's there's other options. the The next two guys we're talking about are just as good, and they they're they not injured, but they won't be there in the eighth round. One of them will. Okay, it, we, fair. Justin Herbert is getting a lot of respect in the fantasy football world right now. Quarterback six off the board. You two have the biggest disparity. He's our ninth by consensus. I have him at eight. But Jason, you're at six. Mike, you're at twelve. Um, 
I, we already know Mike Williams won't be available to him for most of the year, just uh-huh. based on history. No, uh-huh. but why don't you guys discuss briefly why you have him where you do? Because obviously, I think we all, I, I think we're all amazed at the talent, the pure talent of Justin Herbert and what he did in his rookie season. But why the disparity between you two? Oh, I, I mean, it's really a matter of projection, right? As a rookie, we've seen a small sample, and you've just got to decide what is the offense going to be like, what is the team going to be like. It's a new head coach, uh, new coordinator. Uh, when I look at it, the more that I've thought, in fact, this is a recent change. I've moved him up recently because uh, he was more in line with your ranking, Andy, and, and just watching and remembering how good he was, realizing that this is an improved offensive line, a second-year uh, with these players, I, I just think he takes a step forward, and I'm. This is a bet on talent. What we saw last year was unbelievably great. It was, uh, you know, the best rookie season as a pure passer that I can ever remember seeing, uh, in, unless you are kind of counting the sophomore Pat Mahomes first year playing. Uh, but that wasn't fair. It was his second year. So, um, you know, I'm hoping that he takes that huge jump forward. Uh, I think he's got enough weapons on the offense, assuming Mike Williams is actually playing football with Keenan and Austin Eckler and the offensive line. I, I just really like everything I'm seeing out of camp, and I'm betting on the talent. And for me, it's since the year 2000, we've seen 15 rookie quarterbacks average over 13 fantasy points in 10 starts. Cam Newton, Griffin, Russ, Jameis, Mariota, Dak, Baker, like high-level quarterbacks. And ten of the fifteen regressed in points per game. But I, like, I like Herbert. I really do like the future for him. But for fantasy purposes, I mean, it's not that I dislike him. It's the I like other guys more. He shouldn't have to shoulder quite as much of the load if Austin Eckler can stay healthy and be on the field, and he can hand the ball off to somebody that's not Kalen Balage. Well, he needs to hand it off just in a forward motion. Right. Now, just it, a, just like a slight a, we'll forward call it, motion. Let's call that a pass. Now, to be fair uh, to, to, to everything we're talking about here, Justin Herbert's going in the fifth round. Yeah. And even though I am clearly the highest here and I am betting on talent with the ranking, I'm not drafting Justin Herbert. He isn't – like in the fifth round, I'm hoping Kyler gets there. He's my number one quarterback, a right. true difference maker. I think Herbert is going to have a good season and going to be a really solid fantasy asset. Too pricey. But too pricey because this next guy – you know, I, I've been leaving every draft with one of three quarterbacks. It's either Kyler, Tom Brady, or Ryan, Ryan Tannehill. Tannehill. Yeah. Number 10 on our list, 9 for me, 11 for Mike, 11 for Jason, 12th by ADP, and uh, you have. You have ended up with Ryan Tannehill in a ton of drafts. Why do you like that combination of, you know, what he offers fantasy players plus the draft price? Well, he he's already done it. I mean, it's it's kind of wacky and wild to to say that because you look at his fantasy finish and last year was his best. He was the quarterback seven, but he was way 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 better than that. Once AJ AJ Brown missed the beginning of the season and he wasn't good without AJ Brown, and when he got back, he was like the quarterback two the rest of the way. And the previous year, once he took over, he was. Uh, the quarterback three so he's already been a top three quarterback in pretty much two different years and now you're adding Julio Jones to the mix I just think where he's going in a draft there's very few people who have that true breakout upside the the fact that you can you can really have a guy that throws so many touchdowns and is efficient and uh, you know can can have a season-long breakout that late in a draft that's pretty much why yeah, I, we, I like it. We have them ranked in a very similar spot, each of us. Ryan Tannehill is ADP QB 12. Well, I said that a little bit fast, but he's the mm-hmm. quarterback 12 off the board on average. There will be leagues he goes further than that. Sure. By a lot. If you're in a league where the people around you are investing in the upper echelon quarterbacks early, I could see Tannehill going undrafted in some leagues. I could see Tannehill going in the last round in some leagues. Agreed. So that's where you can really be, you know, you don't have to go into a draft saying I'm 100% shooting for Tannehill in the ninth round. You could be like, I'm going to keep Tannehill on my radar and all of a sudden get a free, free potential top seven quarterback for, you know, in the last round. He, he pads with uh, incredible efficiency. The addition of Julio Jones sh- should not be understated for that to continue for Ryan Tannehill. And then he gives you, 
I mean, the, the the play action inside the five with Derrick yeah. Henry. You got to sell out to I mean, stop that, Henry. That's a free touchdown for Ryan Tannehill. Five carries inside the five last year, resulting in four touchdowns. <laughs> Seven rushing touchdowns, and and yeah, yeah, those four touchdowns he got last year. Those are those are. If gimmies. you send all twelve defenders to stop Derrick Henry on the goal all line, twelve. Yeah. What did I say? You said all twelve. So we're, yeah. we're, we're one having, extra. The we're coach. having a guy running off the side. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you if you add an extra man on the field, it's still fifty percent chance you stop Derrick Henry. So that's like you said, it's a free play for Tannehill. Yeah, like I All could probably 20... get one of those touchdowns in if Derrick Henry. Oh, with the play action. With the play action, yeah. I, I beat you. All right, uh, wrap up questions for today. We're going to go through late round quarterbacks, streaming quarterbacks. That's going to be a big time show on Monday. I mean, those are the guys that uh, we'll be answering that question. Who's that late round player that could take the? The you know the Kyler leap, the Allen leap, the Lamar leap in years past, Mahomes even. Um, so that's Monday. Which of these top ten quarterbacks that we just talked about will end up on most of your teams? Brady. Yeah. Tannehill. And then who are you most scared of busting? For me, it is Herbert. Yeah, it's Herbert for me too. Even though I'm betting on talent. Ooh, make it a Baker's dozen. All right. <laughs> Wait, a Baker's dozen is three now. <laughs> Yeah, what was what did you mean there? I just was saying That's I 13. agreed. I agreed. Huh. I, know, I agreed and I just wanted to do it emphatically. He's trying to push it through as though it made sense. I, I knew I it didn't make it. sense. I liked it. Was, it. Okay. A Baker's doesn't. Just, just is how, jocular, that's how many friends. defensive players there are on the field. <laughs> that's right, 13. They sent all 13 after Derrick Henry. That's right. Uh, next week, along with those, that Monday show, we have the Tips and Tricks show next week. Oh, baby. We have our My Guys next week. What, Brooks? And there's a Mock Draft show next week. Oh, man. We've oh, got to enter man. the time machine for that My Guys episode. I want to make sure I get this right. I'm doing – and li listen, I'm doing some some good work on these <laughs> top ten <laughs> – on these top ten what? tips and tricks. No, I really – What do you mean? <laughs> look, I've got I – I, I have impressed myself. <laughs> Even myself. Uh, my, I'm telling you, just just wait for the top ten tips and tricks episode. I got. Do uh, you want to handle all ten? No, <laughs> no. But we've got our. But three uh, of them would be <laughs> some of the best work. Our writer uh, Matt Desorbro, a, a PhD in data science from Harvard, uh, working on some stuff. So don't miss so we'll that need episode. A, you might need a translator. That's right. Okay. All right. That'll do it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed the show. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get a leg up on your league mates. And check us out on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Lots of live streams and things going on this week. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.